Well, welcome. I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet tonight and pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. I want to begin by singling out a few people. Brad. Good on you, Brad. Where are you? <laughs> and Ruby, Jack and Max, thank you for the campaign. And also Kay and Glenn. I want to thank you for the great decision to move to this wonderful region of the Sapphire Coast, which is where all this began. I said when Mike Kelly resigned that it would be tough for Labor to hold this seat, that we started off on 48% of the two-party preferred vote because we lost a member who had been an outstanding representative. But we made a commitment at that point in time that we would stand up during this campaign, as the Australian Labor Party always will, for the people who are left behind. And the day after Mike Kelly resigned, I stood up with this fine young woman standing next to me, Christy McBain. Yeah. I'd met Christy on the hustings. I'd met her when she'd stood up for the people of Eden about expanding the port, when she'd supported the people of this region most significantly in their time of need. Each and every day out there, including at this club, where 1,000 people spent night after night looking after them, speaking up for them, giving them a voice at a time when the government was found wanting. And since then, we know that people have been continued to be left behind. We know the businesses, as we've travelled around, uh, the business in Cooma that had two electronic transactions in 2020 as of two weeks ago, the people who weren't able to get JobKeeper. We met families who'd lost their homes where the debris hadn't been removed, let alone providing them with adequate accommodation. We stood up during this campaign for our national broadcaster, the ABC, which saved lives. <laughs> Christy McBain campaigned each and every day for positive policies. And as of tonight, which is still being counted, so it's too early to claim an outcome, what we can declare is, as of right now, we are over 2,500 votes ahead. <laughs> and I would much rather be Christy McBain than one of her opponents right now. <laughs> Christy McBain has shown herself to be principled, to be passionate about her community, to be absolutely committed and hardworking. And I do thank sincerely the family for lending Christy not just to the Labor Party but to the whole community. We said during this campaign it would be about the people of Eden Monero and it will continue to be. She's articulate, she's considered in what she has to say. She's someone who is about finding solutions, not just having arguments. She's someone who has already made an enormous difference to this community 
and will make an even bigger difference in the future. I give you Christy McBain. start tonight by acknowledging the traditional owners uh, of the lands and waters where we are, the UN people, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. We knew this election was going to be close and as of tonight it's still too close to call, uh, but that's okay because uh, what I want you to know is that in this election we said we would stand up for people. We said we wanted to give a voice to those people that had been left behind we said we wanted to make sure that we shone a spotlight on people in Eden Monero that were doing it really tough. And I think this election campaign, we have definitely done that. Um, so to all those people in Eden Monero, all those people struggling, those small businesses, our tourism and hospitality providers, our forestry workers, our farmers, those people that have been impacted by this fire, thank you for allowing us to share your stories and shine a spotlight on what matters most, and that's people. I try really hard not to get nervous at these things, but this one's a bit nerve-wracking. The last time I was on this stage was New Year's Eve, and I had a room full of people, and I was telling them that if they didn't live here, they needed to leave immediately. And for those people that could not protect their own lives, they had to make decisions about where to go, whether that was an evacuation centre, whether that was to stay with friends or family, or whether that was to make some decisions about if they were best placed to protect their own property. And the weight I felt that night um, is much bigger than the one I feel tonight. I had a room full of people that were really anxious and didn't know what to do, and that was... Um, the second community meeting we'd done that day. And I know that the people in Marimbula, uh, the people in Birmingham, which we'd done before that, and the people in Eden we visited after the Marimbula town hall meeting, were all worried. But right across Eden Monero, there are a lot of people in the same boat. In the southwest slopes, up in the snowies, up towards Braidwood and Naruma. There are a lot of people very worried about their futures, and that has continued for a lot of them. Anthony and I have visited numerous people during the course of this campaign, some who are still living in caravans, some who are still waiting for debris to be cleaned up, some who thought they'd have access to assistance and are still yet to receive it. Um, these are the people that I'm most worried and concerned about and these are the people um, that our government needs to be worried and concerned about. I want to stand up for these regions because I want to my kids to be able to, to grow up here, have a career here and live here for the rest of their lives, like Brad and I have been able to do. I want to focus on regions that is real, a focus on regions that positively plans for people's futures and a focus on regions that proactively looks at what we have to offer because we live here because it's amazing and we want to make other people come here because it is truly amazing to be a regional person. The lesson we've learnt from the black summer bushfires is that leadership matters. It matters when you show up and it matters that you listen to people. No region has done it tougher and we know that. But our challenge has only just begun because recovery and rebuild uh, is going to take time for this community. I want to thank all of my opponents during this election campaign because they have truly shaped um, the campaign itself. So thank you to all of my opponents and I wish you all uh, well into the future. Um, to uh, Anthony, who's campaigned alongside me now for over two months, um, who uh, took a chance and thought he'd uh, check whether a newbie wanted to come into the system. Big chance. <laughs> 
<laughs> you might be kicking yourself a bit later, but... <laughs> and to all the Labor shadow ministers and uh, caucus members who have visited throughout this election campaign, who have campaigned uh, with me and on my behalf, uh, who have... Um, been at pre-poll, who have been on voting booths today, who are scrutineering tonight, thank you so much for your support. Um, to the hundreds of Labor volunteers and supporters who have volunteered their time phone banking, um, who have volunteered their time on pre-poll and at voting booths today, thank you so much. I could never have done anything uh, without your support. So thank you for backing me um, as somebody new uh, to your party. I can't, cannot say thank you enough. I really do appreciate all the... You guys have trusted me to be uh, Labor's advocate during this and um, I hope you continue to trust that I will always put the values of this party first and foremost. Um, to my amazing campaign team, thank you guys so much, the ones that have been with me by my side, the ones that have been virtually there all the time. Um, to Kath and Lockie, you guys have been um, absolutely amazing to work with. Um, to uh, Dobby, Duggan and Jay, you guys are fantastic. Uh, to, to Bob, Dom and George, uh, thank you so much. All of the support means a lot. Uh, Claudia and Emma, um, who have probably learnt far too many of my dad jokes. Um, <laughs> To the uh, Australian Union Labor Movement, thank you guys so much. We have all seen the importance of the union movement during a pandemic, putting workers first, fighting for their rights each and every day. Um, we need to make sure we back our unions uh, because we need to keep them to keep workplaces fair and honest into the future. Um, to my family, to Brad, to Ruby, Max and Jack, thank you guys for... Um, thank you for um, supporting me. Uh, I've always had um, the very best of supporting my husband who has backed me <laughs> since I was a 14-year-old um, when I went to uni when we got married, when we had kids, when I decided I'd, you know, put my hand up to run for local council whilst I was on maternity leave. Um, <laughs> who said to me, Christy, there's never going to be a right time, but you've got to do this now. You've got to stand up for the people we know and love. So thank you. To my mum and dad, Kay and Glenn, and to my um, parents-in-law, Judy and Graham, thank you guys so much. Uh, Brad and I couldn't do the things that we wanted to do uh, without your support. Um, it is truly amazing to have people that support you 100%, uh, regardless of what you do. So thank you very much. I love you. And my brother and sister who have driven to be here today, thank you. I love you guys. Um, and to uh, Matt and E and Brad's brothers um, who are always so supportive, thanks. I really appreciate uh, each and every one of you. Before I sit down, we know it's too close to call. Over the next couple of days, the spotlight's going to fade. Uh, the mail in your letterboxes is going to dry up. Uh, the robocalls will stop. <laughs> But we still have a big challenge ahead of us. Recovery is going to be really hard in Eda Monero and we need to continue to fight uh, every single day to support the people that are being left behind and are falling through the cracks. And I need to be clear about this. When the cameras go away and the spotlight fades, my resolve will not. Regardless of the outcome of this election, I will continue to stand up for these regions that I know and love. I'll continue to stand up for people affected by bushfires. I'll continue to stand up for, far for farmers. I'll continue to stand up for mothers who need maternity services. I'll continue to stand up for better roads, better access to healthcare and education. I'll continue to stand up for workers and I'll continue to stand up for regions, regardless of what happens. 
So thank you all for your support.